My name is Isha and my name is Harini. And we will be your MCs for tonight. Did you guys enjoy the, the regional? Did you guys enjoy the Kahoot? Awesome. Just give us one second. We're just figuring something out and we will get started. Testing, testing. Our president, and he will talk more about the org. Oh, before that, uh, we have a little bit of a feedback form, so parents, coaches, students can all fill it out. Um, so I'll just leave it up for a few seconds. And also to those on the live stream, hello. Um, and I hope you enjoy the award ceremony. We can also send it out in an email after the uh, regional. All right, then without further ado, I'm gonna introduce our president, Martin. Uh, yeah, you're... Hi, hello, I'm Martin. I am the president of ATX ILA. You know, we're glad to have you here. All right, so, ooh, that's the wrong slide. Okay, so I just want to thank, you know, all the members of our team, right? So obviously, not most of them aren't pictured here, but we're glad, I'm glad for every member of our org, also including the hundreds of volunteers that also helped us proctor and grade our tests. Without them, uh, there's no way you would have graded everything in time. So I want to give a special shout out to everyone on our team. All right. I also want to thank to our sponsor, UTIG, so the, the Institute of Geophysics. They help sponsor us. They give us money so we're able to print all these things, reserve all the rooms as well. So without them, we would uh, be unable to host this tournament at all. So I just want to thank, shout out to you, Tay, for that. And I also want to have a special shout out to our, the seniors of our orgs, right? So we have six seniors in our org that are about to graduate from UT, right? One of them is right here, Isha. <laughs> yeah, just want to give a special shout out to them. They've done a lot of work for our org, and we can't wait to see what they can do next. And I would like to introduce uh, one of our tournament directors for this regional, Anita, to give some remarks. All right, hi everyone. As Martin said, I am Anita. I am one of the two tournament directors that um, has been behind the scenes putting this all on for y'all guys. For you guys. Um, Shreyan is hard at work behind the scenes right now, so he won't be making an appearance right now, but I'll speak for both of us. Um, from the bottom of our hearts, I just wanna say thank you to all of you guys for being here. Um, obviously, if it wasn't for you guys, I mean, none of this would matter. Um, we really do it for all of you. All of us, most of us competed in Science Olympiad, and so this is just a really, um, this really comes from deep in our hearts to do this for you guys and to see you guys competing and learning and doing, having fun all day. Um, so did you guys have fun all day? Yes. All right. That's what we like to hear. 
Um, and if you do have feedback for us, positive or negative, um, as Isha said, we do have a feedback form, so please fill that out. Um, that always helps us improve this tournament for you guys. Um, and lastly, I do want to especially thank all of our chaperones who did that today. I know that's a brand new policy. Thank you for adapting with us. So can we get a round of applause for, applause for all of our chaperones? All right, so thank you again, guys. We hope to see you next time. And I'm gonna hand it over to Harini. Okay, so we have a pretty amazing person here with us today. Um, so we have Do Dr. Ryan Doonan um, here with us to speak about his FRI stream and about his research with glowworms. So just to give a bit of background, um, Dr. Ryan Doonan is the research educator of the glowworms research stream, which is a part of the freshman research initiative here at UT Austin. So Dr. Dunin has over 10 years of research experience in genetic analysis of nervous system development and aging in C. elegans. The glow worm stream, which he heads, works with CRISPR knock-in technology to add in a fluorescent pro protein tag, such as GFP, to any gene of C. elegans, a microscopic roundworm. So at the beginning of this year and the semester, Dr. Dunin also became ATX ILE's new faculty advisor so we are super grateful and excited to have him on board. So please give a warm welcome to Dr. Ryan Doonan. OK, can everybody hear me OK? I'm not going to use the mic. I'm a loud talker. So is everybody, yeah? OK. So thank you. That was very nice of you. Um, but the, the applause really shouldn't go for me. I, I first just want to say that I'm really, really honored to be a part of this. I joined just about a month ago as a faculty advisor, not knowing anything about this. Uh, and I was pretty much like shocked that they could pull this off. Um, I, I got there a month ahead of time, and I just got a sense of everything that you had to do. And I'm truly amazed at what they were able to pull off just as a student organization. So please, again, give them a round of applause for everything they do for you. They do a lot. Thank you. OK. Second, I am very inspired to see so many young scientists out there that are excited about science. As a science educator myself, I, I want to recruit new scientists into the fold that would love to do science. So I also want to get you guys to give yourselves a huge round of applause for everything that you accomplished today. It's amazing. I'm very excited about it. Yeah, I think what you guys are doing is amazing, and I think it's really cool, and I'm so glad to be a part of this. I had no idea this existed until I joined this, and I'm just incredibly excited and honored to be a part of it. So I'm also excited to have an opportunity just to tell you a little bit about what we do um, at UT as, as a research educator here. I know you guys are still a little bit young and probably not thinking about where you're going to college yet, um, but let me tell you a little bit about UT and what we have to offer for students doing science. So I'm going to go ahead and skip that slide. And I want to talk a little bit about a thing called TIDES. So it's the Texas Institute for Discovery, Education, and Science. And what we're trying to do is constantly change um, college education for a changing world um, so that we're not just doing reading textbooks and giving didactic lectures. We want to get students involved in real, authentic research experiences as soon as they get into college. So we have this program called the Freshman Research Initiative. And many, many, I would say, uh, currently it's about 40 to 50% of College of Natural Sciences students, when they enter as freshmen, join the Freshman Research Initiative, and they get the opportunity to do real cutting edge research with faculty members on campus as soon as they get to campus. So I'm a member of that group. Um, I'm an assistant professor with Freshman Research Initiative. And there's several other research educators that are involved. And we each run what is known as a research stream. And it's essentially a real functioning research lab, but it functions entirely with undergraduate researchers. And my stream is known as the Glowworms Research Stream. And I'm going to talk a little bit about what that actually is. 
But first, just let me say that there are a ton of really cool streams. So in the same way that you guys competed in all these different events today with lots of different, lots of different disciplines and so forth, this is just, this is not our entire set of streams. Like, this is 28 of our streams. I believe we have 31 now. But they're in very different areas of science, from astronomy to uh, biology, chemistry, computer science, drug discovery, genetics, molecular biology, math, robotics. We have streams that for anybody's interest. So when you come in as a freshman, you join one of these streams based on what your interest is, and you get started working in research right off the bat when you come to college, which is very cool. Um, so let me tell you a little bit more about what we do as part of the glowworm stream. So um, we don't study glowworms like the things that you find in caves in New Zealand and other places like that, um, which I've found to be that misnomer to be bad for students that think they're going to come in and study glowworms from New Zealand. Um, that is not what we actually do. Uh, as a lab, we use a technology called CRISPR. How many of you, by show of hands, know what CRISPR is? Really? That's amazing. So many of you know what CRISPR is. OK, great. So we use CRISPR as a technology. And through that technology, uh, CRISPR allows you to edit DNA, right? You can go into the genome of any organism or any cell or a tissue, and you can cut out pieces of DNA, and you can put in pieces of DNA that you want um, in its place. So what we do as part of the glowworm stream, and it might be implied by the fact that it's called glow, um, is that we put in a sequence that is a, for a fluorescent protein um, so that we can make the worms glow. Does anybody know where the like, first um, fluorescent protein that was used um, for genetic engineering came from? By a show of hands, anybody at all? Or, or you can just say it. Does anyone know where the first fluorescent protein came from? What kind of organism? Um, it's cl that's close. It's the same type of thing that's in fireflies, but it was not fireflies that, that was used in other organisms. But that's a really good guess. I didn't catch that. Say it one more time. Yeah, in the ocean. Jellyfish. Jellyfish. Yes. OK. So, so jellyfish are bioluminescent. They have a green, green fluorescent protein. So what we do is we take that green fluorescent protein. It's honestly not the same one that, that they originally used. They've been improved over time um, synthetically in the lab. So, so we actually typically use one called m neon green or another one called m scarlet. And we put that sequence into worms. So the glowworms research stream uses this tiny nematode called Xenorhabditis elegans. It's not an earthworm. A lot of people think they're going to work with earthworms, but it's this really tiny, microscopic, it's about one millimeter long when it's an adult, and it has all these cute little baby worms, and they crawl around on a plate, um, and they eat bacteria, and they can grow entirely in the lab very easily on these little petri dishes with food. So um, these are just some little worms crawling around, doing their thing. And what we want to do uh, is we want to make these worms glow um, by manipulating their genes. So the glowworms research stream, basically, our job is to we essentially serve the C. elegans research community, which is currently about 15,000 scientists around the world. So this is not some really obscure organism. There are many, many people around the world that study it. And so our job is to um, serve that community by creating um, CRISPR knock-ins for different genes um, to make them fluoresce so that uh, you can analyze the expression of those genes. So we take particular genes. There's about 20,000 protein encoding genes in C. elegans. And our goal is to tag as many of these as possible with the fluorescent protein. So we normally have about 36 students a year, so it would take us about 500 years um, to do that for 20,000 genes, which is obviously not going to happen. Um, so we have to kind of narrow it down at first and decide what do we want to try to tag that will be the most valuable. And currently, we partner with two professors on UT's campus, um, Dr. Dan Dickinson and Dr. John Pierce um, from Molecular Biosciences and Neuroscience. And we start with that smaller subgroup of genes, and we tag currently genes that are involved in cell polarity, genes that are involved in neurodegeneration, and genes that are involved in stress response. So each student that's in the stream, they decide what gene they want to tag with a fluorescent protein, and then every student in the stream makes their own unique worm as part of that process. So they, they do a CRISPR design, they do the molecular cloning to make the plasmids, we inject them into worms, and then we develop this CRISPR worm that has a fluorescent marker. And then when that's done and the student has made it, 
There's this really great facility in Minnesota called the Xenorhabditis Genetic Center. So once the strain is made, um, we send that to them. And then what's really great is the student gets credit for, for designing and making that worm. So on their website, um, that student is indicated. So this is, a, this is one that was made by Bailey, um, one of the students in my stream last year from 2021. So um, that strain gets deposited there so that they archive it, so that it's available to researchers all around the world. So we can track where that worm has been and who's doing research on it and what's being published in that regard. So it's just kind of like an Amazon for worms. You see that little shopping cart up at the top next to GLW-16? You can just go to their website, you can add it to your cart, and that worm can get shipped anywhere around the world to someone that wants to do the research. So, um, it lives on after the student completes the stream and, and continues to be involved in research um, basically forever. So, so we think that's a cool part of the stream that students get to be involved in. And then they also get to see the project through to the end where they actually make their glowworm. So I want to show you some examples of glowworms just so you can see what this looks like. So these are all glowworms that we've made so far in the stream. Um, I will, the very first one at the top, this is perfect because this was one of the Kahoot questions. Um, that MNG ASP4 is expressed in the gut. One of the questions is what are lysosomes? That is where ASP4 is expressed. So all of that green you see are intestinal gut cells of the worm and those are all lysosomes. So ASP4 lights up lysosomes and it's a protease um, that helps degrade proteins in the lysosome. So we've tagged all kinds of things. In general, we don't know where they're gonna be expressed. So we've seen things that are expressed in body wall muscle, endoplasmic reticulum, smooth muscle, um, dopaminergic neurons, uh, germ cells, smooth muscle, um, all the nuclei of all cells. We've seen them expressed everywhere. So that's part of the surprise is, is learning where these genes are actually expressed um, and then what they do. So that's part of the stream and what they do. And we also, I should say, um, we analyze embryos. These are C. elegans embryos. So we can take embryos out of the worm and watch them develop in real time. So these are all two cell embryos. Um, so you have the zygote, it divides into two cells. And these are all two cells with different tags in them. And you can see that they're expressed in very different places in the cell. So some end up in the nucleus. Most of them are in the cytoplasm. Um, Rab7 is in tiny little granules that, um, that are involved in making RNA. Uh, MPP10 is a, a pro, is a nuclear envelope protein. EO1 is only in pronuclei. LIN5 there in the bottom right corner, that's a dividing cell. Those are the spindles undergoing mitosis. Um, so this, it's always a surprise where we see these different things expressed um, and we characterize those things as part of the stream. And then the last thing that I want to show you uh, is what we do um, with these actual embryos. So on the left, this is an embryo dividing in real time with time-lapse imaging. That's the spindle apparatus and it's rocking and now that's mitosis and it's starting to pull the chromosomes apart. And the cell and the students do this on, on a microscope and evaluate all this stuff in real time. They get to do that as part of the stream. So we record these embryos developing. And then the one on the right is tagged. This is EDC3 tagged. It's a little bit hard to see with the lights on, sorry. Um, but we can follow the movement of that protein in real time because it's tagged with, with a fluorescent protein. So these are the kind of things that we do as part of our stream um, that all these students are involved in. And it's a really fun experience for them. UT is, is one of the few universities in the entire country that has this type of research program um, for undergraduates and for freshmen. So if that's something that would interest you, um, you should consider coming to UT and being a part of this. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I wanted to show you. Um, if you have any questions for me, I'd be happy to take any questions. Um, anything you guys want to know about UT or, yeah, in the back. Where do you find what? Like, how to publish research, or like, the, the, where is that published? Where is it published? Oh, yeah. So our students do try to publish as, as part of the stream. So um, it's very difficult to publish a research paper. Uh, if, if I'm completely honest, it is. I mean, I've been a scientist for a lot of years, and I maybe be I've 25 years, and I have maybe 11 papers. Uh, most of that I've been doing education. Uh, but there's a, there's a new platform um, called Micropublication that was developed by the C. elegans field, and now all model organisms use it, and it's a peer-reviewed um, publication, um, but the beauty of it is, is it only requires one figure, and so it's basically one experiment and one figure, so totally doable by an undergraduate in, in a year or even in their entire undergraduate um, 
experience. And uh, we've currently published two micropublications with, I think, 16 undergraduate authors. And I think we, we have another one that's submitted and another one that we're writing. So in the last two years, we've, we've published two things with a couple more on the way with at least 20 to 25 undergraduate authors. So we do publish our, our research in peer-reviewed journals. That's a really good question. Uh, I saw another hand up somewhere. Now I don't know where. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, that's a really good question. He's asking, what's the, what's the point of putting this fluorescence into the worm? Why, why are we doing this? Um, so we're generally deciding to tag genes um, that have orthologs in humans, meaning that gene um, through evolution is conserved in humans. So if we can tag that gene in C. elegans and understand it genetically, it can teach us something about what that gene does in humans if it has an orth orthologous gene. So we currently just stick to tagging genes that have human orthologs. So whatever we learn about it in terms of its function or its expression is generally applicable to, to stuff related to humans. C. elegans has um, been critical to discoveries in cancer, um, and aging, um, nervous system development, a lot of different things related to human, humans. Anything else? Yeah. How similar are the genes in the worms? So 44 percent of the worms' genes have orthologs in humans. So pretty, I mean, that's almost half, which is a lot. So yes, obviously, like chimpanzees are like 98 to 99 percent similar to humans, so pretty far off, but still 44 percent of their genes are conserved. That's a really good question. Anyone else have any questions? Yeah. How did you get into FRI? Is this specifically of working with undergraduate uh, The question was, how did I get into FRI um, working with undergraduate students? That's a good question. Um, I've worked just about everywhere. Uh, I said I've been a scientist for about 25 years. Um, I, I went through grad school. I did an academic postdoc. Um, and then I went on to work in biotech at two different biotech companies. Then I worked as a manager of a biotech facility, um, and that was at UT Austin. And I discovered FRI while working at that biotech facility. Um, we would handle DNA sequencing samples as part of this facility, and we would always get these samples, and they were really poorly labeled and kind of messy and disorganized a little bit. And I was always like, where are these coming from? And I looked up, and I, I realized it was coming from this thing called FRI. And I was like, oh, these are all undergraduate students submitting DNA samples. So that totally makes sense. So. Um, that was actually how I discovered it, and as soon as I found out about it, I was really excited because doing undergraduate research education was exactly what I wanted to do, and that's what this place was doing. Um, so as soon as uh, they brought on another C. Elegans tenure track faculty member, as soon as, like the day after they hired him, I went to him and said, do you want to have an FRI stream? And he said, yeah, I was actually thinking about that. Um, and so I was like, well, I'm ready to do one right now, so if you want to partner up and do it, uh, let's do one, and we started one, uh, I think, a year later or maybe after that, so that's how I got involved, and I love it. It's, like, it's my favorite job I've ever had. I love working with undergrads, and I love teaching them how to do research. It's really fun. Any other questions? Yeah, yeah, sorry. I can't see the hand. Where is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what specific age reversing? Yeah, okay, so the question is, is does it have anything to do with, with aging research or age reversing? Um, that's a good question because actually a lot of stuff that's known about the genetics of aging was learned in C. elegans. Um, that's another major reason it's been a popular model organism. So um, the beauty of studying lifespan in C. elegans is that they only live three weeks, so you don't have to wait very long for them to die. Um, so you can do really long experiments, or really large experiments with large sample sizes. Um, and a lot of the, the pathways that determine longevity were discovered in C. elegans. So the DAF2 insulin signaling pathway, um, the TOR pathway for metabolic sensing, um, calorie restriction, all of those things were discovered in C. elegans and have been shown to be generally applicable to other organisms. So um, reversible aging, I don't, I don't know a lot about reversible aging. Um, I think that, I mean, that's clearly hasn't, we would all love it if there was reversible aging, right? Um, when I worked in that aging lab uh, as a postdoc in, in London, every time I would go in and go through customs to get into London, um, I had to answer the series of questions. And 
without fail, they would always ask me what, what I did, and I said I was a researcher, and they'd say, what did you study? And I would say aging, and then they would say, can you please tell me what the secret of aging is and how to like, be younger and look younger? <laughs> and I would always say, I, I have no idea because I don't study that kind of aging. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but that's a really good question. Aging is very popular in C. elegans. Anything else you guys want to know? I feel like I'm taking up too much time, but yeah, go ahead. How do you get the genes into the worms? Um, so I wish I had a video of it. I don't have a video on here, um, but we do it with a really, really tiny needle, a very, very tiny needle, and we connect it to this uh, little air supply, and we immobilize the worm on this little pad so it can't move. Um, because we don't want it moving when we inject it, and we literally stab the needle into the worm, um, and then uh, there's a little pulse control, and you hit the button, and then the DNA gets injected into the worm. So it's hard to describe. I wish I had a, a movie of it. I'll, I'll put a movie in my, in my later talk for tonight <laughs> if anyone wants to see that, but it's very hard to do, but it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah? Is C. elegans what? Parasite? Oh, yeah. Um, so not the one that we use, thankfully. I've stuck my hand in so many dishes of C. elegans on accident. So um, if it was parasitic, I would surely be dead by now. Um, so it is C. elegans is a cousin of the, of the parasite that causes trichinosis. Do you guys know what that is from eating undercooked pork? Um, that it's, it's very similar, but thankfully C. elegans is non-parasitic, it's free living, so um, it will not survive inside your body, so that's part of the reason that we use it, because it's not parasitic, but that's a good question. Yeah, there are a lot of parasitic nematodes. Yeah, yeah. CRISPR? Yeah, so the question is, has CRISPR been done with, with larger organisms? And the answer is yes. So um, currently, the two model organisms that are most amenable to CRISPR are C. elegans and mouse, actually. So um, there's a very big difference between the two. But um, in terms of, of feasibility, um, mice are probably the next one above um, C. elegans. The problem there is that you have to inject it into, uh, into mouse embryos, and then you, w then you implant those embryos into a host mouse. Um, so the process of, of screening and identifying the CRISPR insertions is a lot harder, um, but it's, it's, relative-wise, it's pretty easy to do in, in mice. So there's lots of different CRISPR mice out there where they've modified, deleted specific genes, modified them, um, and, and UT actually has a facility on campus that will develop CRISPR knockout mice for you. Um, it's the mouse engineering facility. So some students go and work in that facility while they're here at UT to make CRISPR mice. You guys have a lot of questions. I was like not expecting that. Yeah. When you inject, yeah. To the CRISPR? Yeah, so the question is when, when you inject the DNA into the worm for the CRISPR, like how, how does it actually like affect the worm, like what, what's it doing and how, how has it become modified? Um, that's a really good question. So what we're doing is we're injecting it into the germline of the worm. So they have, they have a syncytium of all these germ cell nuclei. So all the nuclei get exposed to the DNA that we inject into the worm. And then just through some random chance thing, it's, it's very low probability. It, it, you, it's probably like one out of every few hundred nuclei get modified by CRISPR. So that's, that's part of the reason why it's relatively easy in C. elegans, because all 300 get exposed at the same time, and they give birth to lots of babies. Um, and it just takes one that's modified. So when we inject it into the worm, um, we use the Cas9 and, it, and the guide RNA, and it targets the, um, our target to the gene that we want to modify. And the Cas9 cuts the gene it's specifically at that site. And then we put in a repair template that has the fluorescent protein, and that gets inserted into the genome exactly where we told the guide RNA and the Cas9 to cut. So all of that gets um, made by us in the lab. We make those DNA molecules. The students make them, um, and then we inject them into the worm. And it's predetermined how that's going to work and how it's going to target its, its particular gene and, and make the fluorescent tag. And the students control that themselves as part of the, of the stream. Yeah, these are all really good questions, you guys. Thank you for so many good questions. Um,
I have to do a social media plug. So um, whenever you get, guys get the chance, please follow us on social media. We have some really cool giveaways, some raffles. Um, Emily over here does a great job of handling our social media page. So it's just ATX um, Sioli. Um, we have some really cool member highlights throughout the week. And then today, there was a scavenger hunt um, all around campus. I'm not sure if you guys were able to do it. Um, it was on our social media page. Uh, but we do have a winner, um, and Emily will introduce the winner. Hi, so you can't really see it. I have a wheel here with the uh, participants of the scavenger hunt, so I'm going to click spin, and we're going to see who it lands on. Okay, so drum roll, please. <laughs> okay. Do we have an Ariana Horsha? <laughs> <laughs> Will somebody claim it in their place and give it to her? Please not go down the middle. Please go to the You want to meet him halfway and give it to Oh. oh okay. Give a round of applause for them. All right, thank you, Emily. So before we get awards started, just a little few things that we wanted to announce. So as you can see, we have the live stream right here. So don't come from the middle when you're coming to get your awards. Go to the sides and then come this way, grab your award, and then walk over there. And Emily right here will take a picture of you guys. All right? Um, and then um, if you have any like lost and found items, we have like a goggle and notebook over here on the corner. Um, so feel free to pick it up if it's yours. Um, and then for at the end of awards, after we announce the overall placing, um, Division C will start pretty much in five minutes after you guys finish. So exit towards the back. There's two doors over there. Feel free to exit. They do lock you out after you have exit. So make sure that you gather all your belongings and then exit. And there are some really cool t-shirts or merchandising of us over there if you saw them at headquarters today. Um, so yeah, feel free. Uh, there's some cool t-shirts and cool stickers that Emily designed. Um, and I think that's about it. Let me just change the slides and we'll get started on our awards. Yeah, so there'll be two people per uh, um, event, and then you'll just like give it to them or put it around there.
you guys for being patient. Uh, let's get started. Uh, so Harini is going to start us off um, with awards, and then um, we please come up and grab your medals and then take pictures over there. All right, I'm going to hand it off. Awesome. Hey, guys, I know this is what y'all been waiting for, so we're going to get started, all right? So You can come up now. Awesome. So our first event is Division B, Anatomy and Physiology. In third place, we have four gentlemen. In second place, we have Sarge Bargia Middle School. And in first place, we have Beckendorf Junior High School. Applause for our winners. Cool. Our next event, Division B Bioprocess Lab. Third place, fourth settlement. Second place, Healing Middle School. Congratulations. Uh, sorry. Congratulations. Awesome. Let's give another round of applause for our winner. Let's give another round of applause for our winners. Hey, Division B, Crave the Wave. Yeah, it's in the team. Third place, Fucking York, Junior High School. Second place, Bottom Middle School. First place, Fucking York, Junior High School. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Let's 
give another round of applause to our winners. Let's give another round of applause. Okay. Division B, Crime Busters. Third place, Beckendorf Junior High School. Second place, Keeling Middle School. First place, Beckendorf Junior High School. Keeling? Yeah. Uh, congratulations. Let's give another round of applause. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. And congratulations. Junior High School. Second 
second place, Bonham Middle School. First place, Lackendorf Junior High School. Congrats. Thank you. Congrats. Thank you. Another round of applause. Mousetrap vehicle. Third place. In second place. In third place. Uh, first place. Third 
place. And second place. And in first place. Seven Lakes, congratulations. Go ahead and take a picture over there. Road Scholar in third place. In second place. And in first place. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. Congratulations. There you go. Rocks and Minerals in third place. In second place. And in first place. What do I do about my partner that is You can just take it for him and give it to him then. In third place. Second place. It's solar power, not solar system. And in first place. Congratulations. Congratulations. Sounds of music. In third place. Second place. And in first place. Congratulations. Storm the castle in third place. In second place. First place. Hi there. Bonham, congratulations. Congratulations. All right, right and do it. In third place. In 
second place. And in first place. All mixed up. Oh my gosh. Give me one second, y'all. There you go. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah, no All right. So, all right. So, one second, guys. So, so for solar power, the, don't look at the screen, I'm gonna verbally say them for solar power. So for third place, Sartarsha Middle School B. In second place, Seven Lakes Junior High A. And in first place, Beckendorf Junior High A. Hi there, do you have a partner? Uh, no, he's not here. Okay. If you want, you can just give them to him. Okay. Thank you. All right. We've got your number in third place. In second place. And in first place. <laughs> all right. He's just collecting all of them. <laughs> Naked egg drop in third place. In second place. And in first place. Oh, here we go. Want... Were there two people in your group? Yeah. Good. So we're good. We're good. You guys That's can. Sit. Yeah, that was it. And then now we're gonna do overall. Rock. Okay. So we'll do overall. You guys can sit down. Thank you guys. Yeah. All right. Now, without further ado, I'm gonna give it off to Herney to give the overall rankings, and then she's gonna just give some closing remarks before we get it started. Awesome, guys. So, um, hope you all enjoyed the award ceremony. 
So just some closing remarks before we head out. Um, just to remind everyone, um, when you all exit, um, just use those two back doors over there. And make sure you collect all your belongings so you don't leave anything behind, because the doors do lock when you get out. So just make sure of that on your way out. And um, yeah, and we thank you all for all your help. And in terms of pictures um, that Miss Emily has taken throughout the day, um, we'll either upload it on a website or, or we'll send it to you in an email. Um, we'll let you know about that. But um, wait, wait. without further ado. Martin says that the S is by team, but Martin just said this must be for school. We're going to announce the overall rankings in a few minutes, so just hold, hang in there, guys. Um, we'll be right back. So um, instead of it going to be shown on the screen, I'm just going to verbally announce them. So when you hear your school's name, everyone can come up on stage. We're going to take a big group picture, and then we're going to announce the rest of the rankings, OK? And Sounds just be great. careful. There's a wire over here, so just be careful of this area. Yes. All right. Awesome.
All right. I don't know who to give it to. All right, perfect. Okay, what? Y'all can come around. You guys can go around this way. Make sure you're all in the picture. I don't want to pick Awesome. Okay. Now we have second place. Second place goes to Bonham Middle School. Let's just go. I really don't want to name it. All right. And for the moment you've all been waiting for, first place. First place goes to Beckendorf Junior High School. Be careful. Thank you.
And before we get started, I would like to introduce our org's president, Martin. Woohoo! Round of applause. What? Yeah, I'll get it to you. All right, hello guys, I am Martin. I am the current president of ATX Science Olympiad organization and we are glad to have you. All right, first off, I wanted to thank all the members of our organization. Without them, this tournament would not be possible. Uh, most of the pictures are here. Some of these pictures, like some of these people aren't pictured in here and also we're a volunteer graders and proctors as well. If it weren't for them, this tournament would not exist today. Also, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, UTIG, they're the ones who give us mice to be able to reserve rooms and prints and all this, you know, get all these nice chemicals just so we can be able to have a great tournament. I want to give a special shout out to our seniors that are graduating uh, this May. So you have Rishi here on the first one. He was a former comms director. We've got Sakina, who's our current finance director. We have Michael, who was a uh, all right, former outreach director, sorry. Uh, you have Adithia, who is a former tournament director. We have Isha right here, who is the current comms director. And you have Ashish, who was our former president for the past two years. So we uh, greatly value their uh, commitment, especially most of them have been doing this for all their four years in college. And I would like to introduce our tournament directors for this regional, Shreyan and Anita. Thank you guys for coming. Of course, this would not be capable without all of you. We want to give a big round of applause to our coaches, our chaperones, our competitors, our event supervisors, and our volunteers for making all of this possible today. All right, guys, and I am Anita. I am our second tournament director. And I also just want to say for any of our seniors out there who are maybe coming to UT next year, we would absolutely love to have you join our team. We will be sending our application out to all of your coaches as well as on our social media. So if you are interested in joining us, make sure you follow all of our pages at ATX Ioli. Um, and we'd love to see your applications at the end of this semester. Um, but other than that, I hope you guys had a great time today and thank you for coming. Awesome. So today we have a truly amazing person with us today. Um, we have Dr. Ryan Doonan, who will be our guest speaker for tonight. Um, just to give a bit more about Dr. Doonan, so Dr. Doonan is the research educator of the Glowworms Research Stream, which is a part of the Freshman Research Initiative at UT Austin. Um, he has done over 10 years of research experience in genetic analysis of nervous system development and aging of C. elegans. So the Glowworm Streams, which he heads, works with CRISPR, knocking technology to add in a fluorescent protein tag, such as GFP, um, to any gene of the C. elegans, a microscopic roundworm. So at the beginning of this year and at the beginning of the semester, we actually had the fortunate opportunity of welcoming Dr. Doonan as our new ATX ILE faculty advisor. So we're super grateful um, that he's on board and we're excited to have him here. So please give a warm welcome to Dr. Ryan Doonan. Perfect, thank you. Thank you, everyone. That's very kind of you. I appreciate it. Um, I'm super honored to be here tonight to be a part of this. Uh, like they said, I just joined up with this about a month ago. Um, I was looking for a way to be more involved in service, um, and Anita was one of the students that was in my class, um, and she said, we're looking for someone, would you want to be involved in this? And I had no idea what it was about, but I'm so glad that I'm involved now because this is an amazing organization run by amazing people, and I'm just really excited to be a part of this. And it's really great for me. I feel super inspired um, to be here to see all of these students so interested in science. As someone that's a science educator, um, that gets me really excited because I love seeing students in the classroom that are excited. So I also want you guys to please give yourselves a round of applause for everything that you did and your competition and how well you've done. Please 
You guys are amazing. Give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you. OK, so we're a little bit pressed for time. So I'm going to try to go through this quickly. And we'll have time for maybe a couple of questions at the end. I will skip through this slide and go directly into what I do. So I'm at UT in a department called the Texas Institute for Discovery, Education, and Science. And our goal is to try to revolutionize undergraduate education because it's a changing world and a changing landscape for education and the workforce. And so we want to move beyond just typical classrooms where you're doing didactic lecture and reading textbooks. And we want students to get involved in real hands-on experiences as soon as they enter college. So in 2005, UT started this program called the Freshman Research Initiative. And currently, about 45 to 50 percent of incoming freshmen join FRI and get placed into a functioning research lab immediately on entry into UT, where they get to be involved in an authentic research experience with real faculty members doing real research with just undergraduates. So my position is as an assistant professor of practice um, within the Freshman Research Initiative. And my particular laboratory is called the Glowworms Research Stream. So each lab is known as a stream because you get into it um, and you spend a whole year in there and you earn course credit while you're doing the research. And so we're called the Glowworms Stream. If you want to follow us, um, there's social media there. There's for three different things. One is for Texas Science. Um, which is just the global um, College of Natural Sciences. There's one for UTFRI for the initiative, and there's one there for Glowworms if you want to follow us on Twitter or Instagram to, to follow what we're doing. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about just the FRI as a whole and all the streams that are involved. So just like today where you competed in all these different events, um, FRI has all these different research streams doing very, very different types of research. So everything from astronomy to biology to chemistry, drug discovery, molecular biology, robotics, you name it. There's, there's streams for almost every type of discipline. And so students choose what discipline they're most interested in and they join that lab um, when they come in as freshmen and get to start doing actual research. So I want to, I'm going to focus, obviously, on, on the stream that i have involved in, which is Glowworms. But since you guys are high school students, I want to take this opportunity uh, to plug this thing that we have called the High School Research Academy um, that is run through FRI. And HSR, it's known as HSRA. It's a hands-on, immersive, experiential learning program um, where you come and actually participate in real hands-on, cutting-edge science. The students work directly with faculty members in their labs um, as part of the FRI streams. Um, the students commit to five weeks, just five weeks of intensive research. Um, it can be anywhere between 15 to 25 hours per week time commitment. And you can also earn college credit through the UT Extension course, the NSC 309. Uh, students receive an HSRA t-shirt, uh, they get to be involved in Friday lunch talks with faculty members, and they'll get a chance to present their research um, at the end of the summer as part of the HSRA Research Symposium. So the program runs from June 13th to the July 20th this summer. Um, it's expensive, I know the cost is $3,500 to be involved, but this year we're offering, I think, 15 to 20 scholarship opportunities that include free tuition. You don't have to pay that $3,500, and we actually will pay you um, $1,500 to participate in the program during the summer. So if you want to apply, um, please do so. The deadline to apply is March 20th. Um, that's the priority deadline. And this is the website. And I know um, Science Olympiad will send that out in their newsletter, um, so you'll have access to that. So if it's something that you would be interested in, we would love to have you. Um, it's a really great experience for, for high school students to be involved in, in real research. So let me tell you a little bit about the research that we do uh, as part of the Glowworm stream. So we do something called um, CRISPR uh, genome engineering. How many of you guys know what that is by a show of hands? Oh, wow, a lot of you. OK, that's, that's amazing. OK, a lot of you know about CRISPR genome editing. So CRISPR genome editing is essentially you can go into the genome of a cell or a tissue or an organism, and you can cut out piece, pieces of that DNA and replace it with whatever DNA that you want, completely customize it however you want. Uh, and as part of the glowworm stream, you might guess from the name um, that we make the worms glow. So we put in genetic sequence that encodes uh, fluorescent proteins. Does anyone know where the first fluorescent protein came from that people started using for, to make reporter genes in organisms? What organism it came from? 
That's what they said. Fireflies was a guess earlier, too. That's a very good guess because it's the same kind of bioluminescence, but it wasn't fireflies. It was not a glow worm. <laughs> we had to get it from somewhere before we could do it in worms. Jellyfish, jellyfish. yes, excellent. From jellyfish. OK, so jellyfish are bioluminescent. They make this protein called green fluorescent protein. It was the first protein to be cloned and to be able to insert it into other organisms so that you could observe the expression of a gene by tagging it with this fluorescent coding sequence. So that's what we do as part of our research stream. Um, we tag genes and C. elegans with fluorescent protein coding sequences, and that allows us to observe the expression. So what is C. elegans? Uh, C. elegans is a very tiny round worm. Um, people think when they start the stream that they're going to be working with earthworms, and so they're shocked when they come in and they have to use a microscope to see them. They're only about a millimeter long, so you can just barely see them by looking at a plate if you hold it up to the light. Um, but they're very tiny. Um, they reproduce very quickly. You can, they can grow easily in the lab on a little petri plate with some bacteria. Um, they reproduce really quickly. And they're an excellent genetic model organism um, for working with undergraduates. So this is what we use in the lab. And essentially what we do as a stream is our goal is to try to serve the C. elegans research community as a whole, which is currently 15,000 scientists. So this is not some very weird, obscure organism that no one works, about, works on or cares about. Um, there's a lot of scientists studying this. So our goal as a stream is to engineer these worms um, by tagging genes that are of wide interest to the community so that they have them as a research resource. Because it, it takes a lot of time and manpower to do this. Um, so we, we harness the enthusiasm of students um, to tag these genes, and we share all these resources with the community. So um, basically, worms have about 20,000 protein encoding genes. So typically, we have about 36 students in the stream per year. So at that rate, it would take us about 500 years to tag all 20,000 genes. So that's obviously not a doable project. So what we decided to do is to start with much smaller subgroups of genes that we could focus on. And we focus on genes that are of interest to people at UT, um, uh, scientists that are here, such as Dr. Dan Dickinson in molecular biosciences and Dr. John Pierce in neuroscience. And those sets of genes we've focused on are involved in different things like cell polarity, neurodegeneration, or stress response are, are some of the ones that we, we focus on now. And so what they do is uh, each student that's in the stream, they choose their own unique gene. They can pick whatever they want um, to tag. And as part of that process, they make their own completely new novel worm that has never been made before. And then once that worm is made, there's this really excellent facility at the University of Minnesota called the Xenorhabditis Genetic Center. And their whole purpose is to archive these strains um, and make them available to anybody that wants them. So once we've made that strain, we, we notify them that it's been made. And we send it to them. And what's really great is that the student that makes it gets credit for that and get, it gets put onto their website. So this particular strain was, was made by one of my students, Bailey, from, from Glowworms 21. Um, and so this is just kind of like an Amazon for worms. You can just go. You see that little shopping cart up next to the GLW-16. Anybody that wants to study RAB7 can just add that to their cart. And then it goes all around the world. And researchers around the world use it. And we can track that data. And we can know where these worms are being used. And we can follow them in publications. And so we can see what impact that our students are having on, on research in all different types of, of topics. So as part of that, uh, so let me, let me tell you a little bit ex exactly about what we do in terms of the CRISPR. And I'm just going to give you this as an example. Uh, and this is in terms of, of Bailey's gene. So she tagged the RAB7 locus. So we go into the worm's genome. And this just represents exon and intron structure. The boxes are the exons separated by introns. And we decide where do we want to insert the fluorescent protein coding sequence. And so we make a design to do that. Um, and so we're going to put in this protein called m neon green. And this, we choose where we're going to insert it so that it's inserted in frame. So when this gets expressed in the worm, you actually end up making this protein that is now tagged um, with the m neon green fluorescent protein. And then we can observe it in real animals um, in real time. So I'm going to show you some examples of, of worms that we've made in the stream so far that we've made glow, essentially. So these are a bunch of glowworms that we've made. 
And the fun part is a lot of times we have no idea where the gene is going to be expressed. Um, they're, they're genes that are, are relatively uncharacterized. And so um, that's part of the fun of the experience. And we've had genes expressed in all different parts of the worm. So gut intestinal cells, body muscle cells, endoplasmic reticulum, smooth muscle. Sometimes they're expressed only in neurons in the nervous system. Sometimes they're expressed in the germline. Um, sometimes they're expressed in the nuclei of all cells if it's a transcription factor. But that's just part of um, what makes it fun for the students is once they've actually made their worm, they can actually visualize where the gene is expressed, and then we kind of try to uh, elucidate from that what is the gene's function. Uh, because of the cell polarity project, we also analyze expression in C. elegans embryos. So we can take the embryos out of the, of the parent, um, and we can put them in these little tiny chambers, and we can watch them grow uh, in real time um, using a microscope. And so these are all two cell stage embryos. They've gone through the first division of the zygote into two cells. And you can see that the protein um, that we've tagged can be expressed in all different parts of the cell. So we most often see it in the cytoplasm, but it can be in the nucleus. It can be in RNA granules. Um, the one in the bottom right corner, um, that's a cell undergoing mitosis. So you can see that it localizes to the spindles that are about to, to come apart during mitosis. Um, so yeah, so that's, this is part of their experience is just to, um, to tag these genes, figure out where they're expressed, and then based on that, we try to figure out what the function of those genes actually are. So the last thing I want to show you is uh, some movies that students have taken as part of the stream. And the first one is just showing a, a dividing zygote. So this is post-fertilization. You can see the mitotic spindles rocking back and forth um, before it's going to go under my, co mitosis. And now, did the other one start? I don't think it started. It's a little bit hard to see the one on the right. I'm sorry. But this, this is one that's actually tagged with a fluorescent marker. Uh-oh. Sorry. Let me try again, if I can get it to start. I can't see my cursor on the screen, so. I think if I just wait for it, it'll go. I just can't see the, oh, there you go. OK, sorry about that. So um, I know it's a little bit hard to see because it's not dark in here. But so this is EDC3 tagged with M neon green. And you can see as the cell divides, um, it mostly um, occurs in these little clusters in the cell on the right. But eventually, it appears in all the cells because it's an RNA granule protein. So we watch these things divide in real time. Um, and, and it helps us try to figure out what, what that gene actually does. So that's what our students do as part of our stream. Um, so if, if you're interested, if, you, if you're coming to UT, I highly encourage you to join FRI. Um, if you're a rising junior or a rising sophomore, you're eligible to, to participate in HSRA. So you should do that as well. And because um, we're doing lots of really cool things that you guys can, cutting edge science that you guys can take part in. So we're short on time, so I'll take a couple of questions. I, I was shocked by the number of questions I got in the middle school section, like really awesome questions. Um, but because of time, I'll, we'll take like three questions. Does anyone have any questions about FRI or glowworms or anything we do? Yeah. Uh, do you all have glowworms? Yes. Uh, so as, as the, the glowworms lab does not, but the lab space that I share um, with the gene network stream, they use HeLa cells. So their stream, I should know more about what their stream does, honestly, but I, I'm not totally sure. But they're a cell culture lab, um, and they, I know that they use HeLa cells. Yeah. Anyone else have any questions? Yeah. considering how evolutionary diverse like worms and humans are. But yes, we normally try to tag genes that have human orthologs. One more question. Anybody else have any questions? No? OK, well, thank you guys so much for your time. And
Would you like to do the first place thing again? Yeah. Oh, yeah, perfect. Sure. I think you leave the race in like a first split second. Dr. Doonan. All right, uh, so before we get started on awards, just a few things. Please follow us on social media, ATX Ioli, on our Instagram account. We do some really cool raffles. We do member highlights um, behind the scenes. Um, and yeah, pretty cool stuff. Uh, so today we had a scavenger hunt uh, that Emily made over here. And we have a winner. So she will be announcing that winner. Hello. Lost and found. Do you need to say anything about Lost and Found? As if Lost is here. What? As if Lost is here. Oh. Is a present? Oh. Yeah, we have your calculator. We have a calculator, so, um, yeah, we have a calculator and a pair of goggles. So if anyone has lost um, that, it will be here in Lost and Found. Um, so, just a few things. Uh, we have a live stream going on over here, so when you're picking up awards, try not to come in the middle, go to the ends, and then come this way, pick up your medal from here. Uh, Emily will be taking a picture of you guys from there, and then go back to your seats if you can. That would really help speed things up. Um, for, we have a few like shirts for, like, um, for merchandise, so they will be outside when you're exiting. Try not to exit from these doors over here. We have two doors on the back side, so exit from there. That's where all our merchandise will be. Um, and once you leave, you can't enter back into the UTC, so make sure you gather all your belongings so before you leave. All right, I believe that is it for me, and we will get started in awards. Let me just switch the PowerPoint, and we will get started. Hope you guys are excited. Let's get this thing started. Uh, so I'm gonna pass it off to Herney to start us off, and yeah. Awesome, so I bet y'all are all waiting for this part of the night. So without further ado, let's start with our first event. Okay, Division C Anatomy and Physiology. Third place goes to Westwood High School. Keep going. Second place goes to Harmony School of Advancement. 
Division C Bridge, third place, North Austin Science Alliance and Jordan High School. We had a tie for this for second place, so hence we're going to be giving medals for both schools. So both of y'all can come up here. Division C, Cell Biology. Third place, Jordan High School. Second place, Westwood High School. Third place, Summit High School. Event Division C Detector Building. Third 
Second place, Jordan High School. Second place, Lhasa. First place, Jordan High School. Dynamic Planet. Third place, Clements High School. Second place, Clements High School. First place, Gordon High School. Next event, Division C Environmental Chemistry. Third place, Clemens High School. Second place, Jordan High School. Third place, Clemens High School. Division C, Experimental Design. Third place, Clemens High School. Second place, Jordan High School. First place, Rasa. Okay, next. Our next event is Division C, Forensics. Third place, Clemens High School. Second place, Austin Area Home School. First place, Jordan High School.
Our next event is Green Generation. Third place, Clements High School. Second place, Austin Area Home School. First place, Jordan High School. It's about time, in third place. In second place. And in first place. Ornithology in third place. In second place. And in first place. In third place, in second place, and in first place. and minerals in third place in second place and in first place Trajectory in third place. In second place. And in first place.
All right, Wi-Fi Lab in third place. In second place. First place. Right to do it in third place. In second place. And in first place. first place. <laughs> All right, cybersecurity in third place. In second place. And in first place. Science word in third place. In second place. And in first place. Power in third place. Second place. And in first place. Got your number in third place. In second place. 
and in first place. You guys are good. Great. Oh, you guys are good. We're doing overall now. We'll do overall. So you guys are good. Yeah. Yeah. We'll we'll take care of it. to give the overall rankings. Cool. So, the moment that you've all been waiting for. Um, just to keep in mind, the overall results and stuff, they will come by today night or tomorrow morning. So it'll come shortly after our award ceremony, just to let you all know. Um, but without further ado, to get to our overall rankings. So, in fourth place, we have Austin Area Homeschool. I can take a picture. Congrats. Thank you. we have Lhasa. Congratulations. Second place, second place we have
congratulations. And last but not least, first place, first place goes to Jordan High School. It's pretty heavy, congratulations. So congratulations to all the winners. Um, just before y'all head out, um, we just wanted to let you know that our merch table is outside towards the exit. So feel free to buy any shirts, stickers, or whatever um, as you're heading out. So thank you so much and enjoy your medals and awards.